Welcome back, everybody. If you can't tell, I went to prison and tried to blend in with my environment. That's better. I didn't want nobody having a seizure while watching this. If I had this hairdo in prison, man, they probably would have put me in PC thinking I was Elvis. Oh, I'm just fluffing my own feathers this morning. But look, I got 10 top 10 most embarrassing, awkward moments I've ever went through in lockup. But if y'all enjoy this type of content, all things lockup and crime related, this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out the playlist with over 1,400 videos for you to start watching today. Alright, where to begin? I guess all the way in the beginning, huh? That's the best spot. The first most embarrassing, uh, awkward moment that I had in lockup was within the first day, pretty much. Okay, going to the showers. Actually, I had... A couple of these are going to be coming from the showers. Treacherous. Okay, believe it or not, taking a shower in prison can be very, or jail can be very stressful, especially if you don't know the ropes. And there are certain ropes depending on the establishment. Sometimes you can't win or lose. You're going to lose right off the break, and I'll explain here shortly. But first up was going into the shower without my shower shoes. Look, they give you little sandals when you first come in. Them things are for you to take showers with. They gave me like a brand new pair. I thought them things were for chilling. So let my shortcomings teach y'all, okay? Wear them things in the damn shower. Next up is coming from the same exact cell block in the same shower. There's this guy that came in. He was massive, man. I know a lot of people say, you know, they start off stories, especially fight stories. But man, dude was massive, you know? Uh, but this guy really was. And he wasn't. He was massive and looked like the best way to explain it, like Shrek. Worse than Shrek. Anyways, dude came in and first thing smoking. What you could see was he had huge, like, triple D fake tits. Breasts, I'm sorry. No, I'm 2% French. I can talk dirty sometimes. And for those of y'all that were asking in my vlog video, my mom's from Colombia. So yeah, that's where this mocha latte comes from. Anyways, homeboy comes in and he's stirring up the whole cell block. You got people actually catcalling him. You know, I'm still fresh into jail, lockup scene, and uh, I still have some of the memories of movies I've seen in the past. And he looks like someone that would definitely try to knock you out and take something from you. Take something from you that you could never get back. But anyways, it got kind of weird, man. Sometimes he would walk past and look at me and I would lock eyes with him and it just, you know, turn my head real quick. You know, I just avoid this guy at all costs, but... You know, unfortunately, when, you know, when you are somewhat good looking in lockup, man, you know, people that swing that way might be peering at you. They might even do a drive by, which is when you're in the shower, you know, you're soaked up, got it all in your face. You're going to rinse off. He walked right past and take a glimpse of them cheeks, those freshly white glazed soaked honey buns in the tank. Yeah. So make sure you're looking in the rear view mirror at all times. But anyways, I veer off track here. We're still on number two. But just to sum this all up, it was shower time again. You know, I'm going to the shower. I like to go when no one's really in there. In this particular jail, it was a regular pod style, but they had this little cutway, a little side part of the pod right behind the correctional officer's desk. And at this time, correctional officers would sit inside the pod. They don't know more because they got they ended up getting attacked later on down the road. But right behind them was the washer, dryer, and the shower stalls. That's right. There were stalls. They had these barricades that came up. Look, I'm 5'10", 5 5'9 5 on a rainy day. But, you know, who's counting? I'm sitting in the shower and the stall will come up to about right here on me, right? So I'm in the damn tank and I see him coming with his chair. Like when people come to the shower, they would bring their chair with their towel and so they could put their uniform on it, bar soap, whatever. And he was coming with his chair and I'm in the tank like, Shh. I didn't want him to really think that it phased me, so I just kind of chilled there for a little bit. Uh, not too, too long, but he got into that damn shower stall, okay? And it was probably one of the most awkward moments because all I had to do was look this way, and there's going to be massive breasts directly in, in line for me to suckle. That's number two awkward, weird moments I had in lockup. But number three, rolling into number three, we're going to stay in jail for this one as well. You know, in jail, they, they don't feed the best trays. Some trays, you know, they 
they're not so bad. You can eat two, three, maybe four of them. Hot dog trays, uh, burger trays. It just depends. Chicken trays, you know, some places don't serve that anymore. But I think it was the SOS that did this to me. I enjoyed the what we call shit on the shingles <laughs> in jail. It was like this nasty, uh, you know, first off, the driest piece of biscuit you could ever have. If you don't put this slop on it, you're going to choke probably just eating a regular biscuit. But this slop was like gravy and, you know, the nasty meat rock mix. But I enjoyed it, you know. And that particular morning, I think they had grits too. It just, the grits did look a little watery if I remember correctly. But that night, I went to sleep and uh, it was lockdown time. And, you know, sometimes you got to pass gas, right? You got to pass gas in, in jail. You try to do it respectfully. But at this time, I had rapper Mike, I think, in my cell, right? So I wasn't respecting nothing. I was just blowing ass anywhere, anyhow. So I get up off my bunk to take a piss. And, uh, you know, I've been gassy all night. I've been letting them loose. So, you know, this particular time, I was getting gassy as I was going pee. And fellas, ladies too, y'all know it. Sometimes when you go number one, you let a little air out the tank. I did, but it wasn't just air. It was like water. Man, I didn't know what to do. It was lockdown time. I had to get in that tank, so I started screaming. Man down, man down. That's the only way they'll come in. I had to get the guards in there. I said, hey, man, look, you got to listen to me for real. Listen to me. Because, you know, these guys, they get game ran on them 24-7, disrespected. So they'll listen to what you have to say for a split second and walk off and don't give two shits. But luckily... Uh, I think these guys knew I dealt with a little bit of principle, right? And, you know, if they didn't listen, I probably would have hit that damn fire alarm or something. Because we were known in that cell block in particular to be busting those fire alarms and getting the fire department in just for GP. General purpose, not general population. Anyway, so I tell them, I said, look, man, I got to get in that damn shower right now. I just crapped all over myself. And he rolled the bars and let me in, man, you know, but shit happens sometimes. Literally. Now rolling into number four. One more coming from jail, I believe. And, and trust me, I got a ton of embarrassing and wild moments coming from jail. But these are my top ones. The first time I ever got locked up. Okay, we're going to move into the prison side of things here in a second. Anyways, uh, I was in the same style cell block as the story before. But I'm in a different one and I'm outside of the cell this time. I'm on the boulevard on this little plastic boat. And... Once again, I wake up in the middle of the night to go take a piss. When you sleep on the boulevard, you go use the community toilet and the shower. At any time, you can use it. That was one of the benefits of not being locked in the cell. Not to mention, they had a shower curtain that was like made out of this thick plastic. I used to roll it all the way up, make a long uh, like shaft. And I would snag, I would fish the... Uh, TV electrical cord because they would unplug the TVs, but it would only be about four feet away from us, right? So it'd just be dangling. I would fish the cord and somehow shove the electrical part into the uh, pla rolled up plastic shower sheet and it would just sit in there and I would just plug it right in. BET uncut all night long. Nelly's tip drill is what we're all waiting for. Maybe a little disco inferno from 50 Cent. That'd be nice. So I wake up in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom, and there's only like 10 cells in this cell block. So I'm all the way to the other end. I'm walking past all these cells, and I'm just looking in, being nosy. It's like 2.30, 3 in the morning. Believe it or not, everybody sounds like they're asleep. It seems like a peaceful night in, in the cell block. But I keep walking down, and at the very end, I snag a glimpse of something I could never imagine. I saw a young and respected gang member, probably about 25 years old making love sweet love and i mean the craziest position man i i can't even break it down to y'all to the oldest inmate in the cell block that we called pit bull because that fool had so much damn hair but he had no teeth oh my god i can only imagine what he was doing with those gums but yeah this guy was bald up top but his hair would start like right here on his neck and it would go down his back and it would go down his legs and it would have no break. It would be, it was just one big patch. You ever see those guys, man, uh, that got fur everywhere, even on their face? That's what it looked like he would have had if he let his face grow, you know, but he didn't have a lick of hair on the old nugget. That <laughs> shit was wild, man. But anyways, later on down the road, someone ended up beating that guy up taking his cookies and he pressed charges they were about to go home and they got a fresh strong arm robbery case over damn miniature chocolate chip cookies a dollar i think it was a dollar five at the time 
Anyways, that guy was uh, having relations with this young gang member, and the young gang member was definitely the recipient of the action, if if you understand what I'm saying. But when I walked past, these guys flipped up out that mix so fast and got in their racks like nothing even happened. I'm like, man, it's too late. I seen it all. Anyways, let's run up out of jail and step into the state penitentiary. I think we're on number five, right? Number five. Two of them are going to be coming from the shower room. Okay, like I said, it's sometimes it's a lose-lose situation. I came from a jail where you had a shower curtain. You know, you could bathe in there butt naked if you want to and, and peace because it's a single shower well even in jail i would wash my clothes in the shower so sometimes i would wear my boxers and just wash them as i'm you know taking a shower and that's how most people did it but we were never in a group setting so i didn't know how to handle group setting showers anyways i'm going to prison a dorm and inside the dorm the shower room is massive no barricades, nothing, just a bunch of damn shower heads. And I'm like, oh man, how am I going to finagle this one? Look, by no way am I ashamed of my manhood. I just was not used to taking a shower in front of a bunch of other people. It was crazy. So within the first day, just seeing the movements of the facility, the next, I figured the next day when I go to take a shower, the second day of me being in there, I'll be able to know when to take one where I'd be pretty relaxed, right? So uh, it was yard call. And everyone went to the yard, and I went to the yard for a little bit, but they have these gate breaks. So I took the gate, I said to myself, I'll take the gate break early, and the traffic in the shower is probably minimal. Keep in mind, there's like over 200 people in this damn dorm, man. It's a ton. They're all working out, you know? And uh, so I go in, I get my shower stuff, I rush in there. There's no one in there. I'm like, man, this is nice. So I do what I know, right? And I'm showering, and I'm cleaning my boxers at the same time, not knowing they got... You know, washer, dryers, and a laundry guy, and all kinds of stuff in this dorm. But so I'm in the shower washing these puppies, and all of a sudden, I guess they close the yard. Man, oh man. The flock of naked bodies that came my way is unreal, y'all. And, and what made it even worse is I'm the only one in there with boxers. I look like a soft ass little bitch. I know some places, look, I went to other prisons where these guys literally showered in their boxers. But this damn prison, everyone was ass naked. You know, I'm going to have to drop these draws, man. I have to make it look like I was just washing them and then drop them while everyone's in here. I can't just dip, right? Uh, and that's what I do. I drop the draws. And it was one of the most awkward, weird moments, man. Uh, you, you know, you don't know what to do. You just keep your, your, your look straight. You might look left a little bit, right, a little bit, and, and that's it. But you never look left, right, down. This ain't no cheat code here, man. You ain't going down at all. No, sir. So uh, I didn't have no issues with it. Once I took my boxers off, I think they realized, oh, he's still in the jail, jail mentality. But I went to a prison later on, and they were all showering with their boxers on, so... I knew it was just up to the establishment, which is weird to me. You would think that'd be universal. Now, look, let's think if I were to have gone in there butt naked and everybody came in there washing their stuff with their boxers on, everyone would have thought, but man, what's wrong with this guy, man? He's running wild. So that's why I say sometimes it's a lose-lose situation. Don't matter which way you go, it's a toss-up. But that was number five, my first experience inside of a dorm-style shower. Number six is coming from the same exact shower, okay? I went into the... I'm going to be quick about this one. I'm not going into depth and detail. But keep in mind, uh, I'm seeing a lot of things in prison that I haven't seen before. So like I was saying, I was going to the shower. And I'm used to things now, right? I'm, I'm getting a swing of things. Except for this. I had to actually ask my homeboy what the hell this cat was doing. And he broke it down for me. But, but I went in there. And one of those cats that was known to have a boyfriend was in there squatting Desert Eagle style. And he was literally cleansing himself in the shower. Right? I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I turned around. Told my homeboy. And he broke down exactly what was happening for me, man. It was insane. So number six, yeah, you never know what you're going to see in the prison shower as well as rolling into number seven, what you'll see on the prison yard. At least over here in the East Coast, man, shit can get freaky. Within the first month of walking the prison yard, I've seen some wild things, man. I've seen people get knocked out, uh, guys walking behind individuals for like five minutes. And next thing you know, they're knocking them out with a lock and a sock. So 
I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff in prison yards, a lot of funny stuff as well, but now I'm walking the track and I still don't know the swing of things about this prison so much, but I'm going around this area that I soon later find out is where they sharpen shanks and do a lot of dirt because it's a blind spot. And when I was walking, it just so happened to be two guys getting topped off. That's right. Getting their damn jank smoke right there in the front of everybody broad daylight man you know and i was i ain't gonna lie i was in complete shock i didn't know what was going on i thought maybe it was a new exercise or something you know on their knees doing something weird so i had to look a little closer you know my vision's pretty damn bad i didn't have no glasses at the time sure enough man that's when i got close enough to notice what was going on i took a quick u-turn and just was thinking to myself man people ain't gonna believe this so yeah that was number seven another uh wild experience that, you know and these things is normal activities for a lot of people but when you see it in in the wide open like that it just hits different and back then you know uh I guess people's mindset wasn't as open as it is nowadays. You know what I mean? Number eight is coming from this pr the same prison, okay? I was in a cell block, and there was this guy in there. I, I'll name him because to this day, I can't stand your ass. I don't know why he did this shit, but his name was St. Louis. That's what they called him, at least. You know, I didn't know his real name, but... He was a gang member that was calling shots in this particular pod. And I'll never forget, we were roaming around the pod. And I knew all of his little, I guess you could call them footmen. You know, the lower lower cats, a part of the organization. And I gamble with them all the time, shoot dice, man. We kicked it almost every single day, especially me and this one cat. I think his name was Dre. But yeah, I knew these cats and I spent a lot of time with them, even worked out with them. Good people. Part of an organization, though. Keep in mind, it could go either way. You got to be very careful, though, dealing with these individuals. Because even if you're kicking it with them every day, they could get a, uh, you know, the call for them to put in some hands on me. And they ain't going to say no. They're going to do as they're told. So it's always a risky business dealing with them individuals. And I've seen that happen firsthand. But we're roaming around the pod. It's not on lockdown. A big hat comes in, which is like a sergeant or lieutenant. They come in with their marine looking hats, you know. And they'll have a couple COs with them that got like regular baseball caps, right? So they come into the cell block and they pull that St. Louis cat to the side and take him to the top tier to a cell. They search his cell and they find a shank. So they cuff him up and the unbelievable happens. As they're walking him out to the sally port to take him to the SAG unit or whatever, he screams out to his little soldiers that, I'm the one that told the COs about his shank. I had no idea anything about this damn cat. Nothing about this guy, right? Nothing. But those guys start walking my way and coming up the stairs all fast, his little foot soldiers or whatever. And, you know, I tell them straight up, look, bro, you know damn well I would never do something like this. I don't even deal with that cat, man. Y'all know this. So I plow through them, man, before they can even react. They didn't. The good thing is they didn't start stomping me out immediately, right? They're actually listening to me. So I run down the stairs and I, the only thing that came to my mind to, to, to guard myself is scream back at him. You're full of shit. I ain't say nothing about you. And I was saying some disrespectful stuff, but I mean, I had to stand up for myself, right? What would you have done in that situation, man? It was a very, very awkward, scary situation because I literally had nothing to do with this, man. I was just bidding, you know, it, they used, he had to have just used me as an escape goat. He was probably going to get got by his own people, but it was complete bull crap and it amounted to nothing. I went right about my business and never heard about that guy again. Very strange situation, man. I'm not going to lie. Now rolling into number eight. I hope we're on number eight. Y'all know I do tend to lose track sometimes and veer off the course. I had a new cellmate. New cellmate comes into the cell block and, uh, you know, we get to know each other. We become pretty good friends and as a matter of fact I knew his little brother from high school so immediately we kind of connected and he knew my brother too that passed away rest in peace Mike but uh we start opening up to each other and keep in mind this is my cell man I gotta live with him every single day for a certain amount of time so I get transferred or whatever and uh we get to know each other a little bit start talking about our family members and he realized that's how I realized he knew my brother and then he starts opening up and showing me pictures of his wife so I look at the pictures and, and immediately I'm like, oh, shit. I was smoking his old lady's boots well before he broke them in. All I said was, man, she's very pretty. You're a lucky guy, bro. You know, I mean, you ain't gonna say nothing to him about that. That's disrespectful as hell. But that's why I never showed people my old lady's photos, man. 
not only could they take the image and run with it to the shower or something, you know, a, a quick visual save, maybe sketch it out later and use it for the next 20 years. I don't know. I just don't show my photos. But yeah, this could happen as well, man. Show a person a photo and not know that, you know, someone else was sleeping with your old lady well before you fell in love with her. So that was a very awkward moment, man. You know, every time he t mentioned her, you know. Uh, oh, why isn't she answering? I just want to say, man, maybe she's sleeping with someone, you know, you never know. Next up, number nine, and this is definitely an awkward one. If you've done enough time in prison, chances are you're going to run into this situation. Look, I was a people's person, especially on my first bid, you know, I was, I was in the mix a bit, dealing with everybody, all kinds of walks of life. And the first time this happened to me was actually on the softball field. You know, some prisons actually have baseball fields and bats, gloves, all that stuff, right? So they had teams in this particular prison, and we would go from unit to unit uh, playing in the little championship that they created or whatever. But the housing unit that we're going to play against actually had some buddies of mine that used to be in our unit. They just got in trouble, went to the hole, and they put them in a new building. So uh, after the game, they actually won. Their team was really good. But at the end of most baseball games, you know, you line up and you – walk and you know uh give a person a little high five good sportsmanship type of thing you know they still do it to this day and uh i was looking forward to talking to my homeboys a little bit but they started off with a little bit of drama right they said hey man so you got some new players on the team because they knew all the players that used to be on the team and just so happened one of our newest best players shortstop he said hey look you know uh i'm just letting you know uh, he's known to take cheeks, bro. The facility he was at before this, for sure, he was doing it. Uh, you know, and I've had interactions with the shortstop, man, you know, because I was kind of like the leader of the team a bit. I guess you could say I was more active into the softball than anything else. Only when the season was in effect. They didn't do it year round. But anyways, but when he told me that, you know, this was my first time hearing this about someone, but I truly believed him. So after that, it was very awkward dealing with this guy. But look, if anybody ever, let's say you do happen to go to prison and your buddy that you've been dealing with for quite some time, you built a little trust up with him, comes up to you and says, hey, bro, that new guy you're talking to and hanging out with, he's known for doing stuff like that. You need to take that highly into consideration because chances are it's true. And chances are, you know, he has nothing but time. He's going to try to turn that friendship into something else. So, yeah, it was awkward dealing with this guy. I still dealt with him. Uh, but it was it wouldn't be the last time something like this came my way. There was a few other people that I had at the poker table. And, you know, someone would come up and say that the same type of stuff about him. And, you know, you just got to play your cards right. But that's number nine. And it's a very real reality of the penitentiary. Number 10. And this one, man, you know, we got to we got to drive all the way back to when I first got my charges and I was going in and out the court system. Oh, man, I don't think I've ever told this one on the channel, but. OK, when you go to court, you have to go in these holding tanks and these holding tanks, they never have toilet paper, never. And they slam the tanks with like 20, 30 people. It's only built for like four. And I remember I was facing abduction, man. I was farting all morning, nervous as hell. And it was the second part of my trial. So the judge actually uh, he continued it. He didn't do this. He didn't, you know, say if I was guilty, innocent, or anything. He continued it to the weekend. So I had all weekend to sit in the cell and, and ponder if the judge is going to believe what I said or what they said. So my court date comes around, man, and I am so nervous. I ain't slept at all those those days. Uh, you know, I'm fate, I could possibly get out when I'm 60 years old if I'm found guilty for this. So I couldn't find joy in anything, okay? Music, TV, nothing. With that in the back of your head, you can't enjoy shit. 18 years old, man, I, I had my whole life in front of me and it, it could be all gone within a second, you know, and I'm going to find out today. So I'm in the holding tank, man, and I couldn't hold it no more. I had to go. And I'm like, man, I'm sorry, fellas. I'm so sorry because it's slam packed in there. We're in there like tunas, but I got to drop this damn deuce, fellas. Watch out. In the toilet seat, I'll never forget. Remember, there's no toilet paper in there, so we couldn't clean off the toilet seat. The toilet seat had shit on it from... God knows where, but I can't just crap myself or crap on the floor. So I sat on that jank raw squirrel, rode that silver bullet, dirty silver bullet. And I dropped one of the most explosive damn dumps ever. And it stunk so bad. Look, this ain't, that ain't even the worst part. Okay, keep in mind, 
there's guys all in the cell. So they're griping. They're like, oh my God, bro, what the hell? What's wrong with you? What have you been eating, man? You're nasty. This is sick. They start banging on the cell doors. And in the back, there's nobody in the back but correctional officers. There's only supposed to be a correctional officer back there or an attorney. And usually it's court appointed attorneys with guys with crescent moon, you know, hairdo, all bald, but got a little hair on the side or rough looking court appointed attorneys, right? But there's also some that people know about because they're women and they're pretty beautiful to most of these inmates, right? So they know which ones is which because they're coming back there on a regular basis. They're not paid attorneys. They're by the state. So they're doing thousands of cases, you know, and many people get used to the faces. Anyways, they start banging on this damn cell door trying to get a CO to give me some toilet paper or just get, get them up out the cell and put them in another cell because it was rancid. I'm not going to lie. But guess who was the first one to show up at the damn tank window? One of the well-known, best-looking court-appointed attorneys probably in the whole city. I'm on the toilet waiting for a CO to pop up or, you know, someone. I had no idea it was going to be her. As soon as I heard a female's voice, I looked back like, she's looking right at me. And I'm like, oh. Keep in mind, I'm still go got to go to trial after this, right? The, the end part of my trial. But guess what? There's light at the end of the tunnel, ladies and gentlemen. I spanked that jank. Not guilty, baby. I ain't abduct shit and I damn sure didn't. But I almost went down for it. One of the most absolute terrifying events in my life. Not to mention crapping in front of all those guys in a tuna packed cell with no toilet paper. Anyone who's been locked up knows how treacherous this is. But that is my most top 10 awkward moments in prison. Hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you never have to go through this. Keep in mind, one of the first things that goes straight out the window when you get locked up is your privacy. Man, I'll never forget how good it felt just to sit in a regular bathroom on a toilet and take a shower in complete privacy. Man, I still love it to this day.